Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's a double feature today because this is not only our news watch unit for the month of September; it's also our all English lecture for the month of September. And we've also got two news stories that we'd like to talk to you about. Boy, do I love bees! I love honey, even though it's very sweet. I like bees, and also there's this problem with the sexualization in sports and whether or not female. Gymnasts should have the right to、uh, wear whatever costume they want to. Yeah, their uniform.、Um, you know, all athletes have some sort of uniform to wear. So we'll talk about、uh, the German gymnasts deciding they're going to choose their own uniform, and、uh, you know, see how you feel about that. I love bees, Tom, but. I don't like being stung by bees. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Ah,、uh, yeah, once I think right here in Taiwan. I was、Ow. riding my scooter and suddenly I felt this sharp pain in my leg. I don't know why the bee he, decided to sting me right there. He got there. you while you were on your scooter. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I couldn't explain it any other way. What else could have caused that sudden pain there? Wow. But、uh, yeah, I had to be very careful because I was moving at the time, and I suddenly had this pain in my leg. It hurt. Okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and read through both the newspaper stories, or the news stories, I should say. Dutch bee populations remain steady in fourth annual bee census. The Netherlands' fourth annual national bee census has produced encouraging news. Its urban bee populations are holding steady. This census occurred via a nationwide exercise in April, when 11,000 participants spent 30 minutes counting the bees and hoverflies in their gardens. More than 200,000 were counted, with an average of 18 to 20 per garden. These numbers are a hopeful sign that the nation's bees are in good health. The country credits this to the public and private initiatives that Dutch bee lovers have implemented to save these helpful insects. One is Amsterdam's installation of bee hotels, collections of small hollow plant stems for solitary bees to nest in. The city of Utrecht has made 316 of its bus stops into bee stops with rooftop gardens, which attract bees and help absorb rainwater and dust. One woman has launched Honey Highway, which collaborates with Dutch cities to plant wildflowers along highways and waterways, giving bees food and shelter. It's hoped that other countries can imitate these caring measures. To protect their own bee populations. Speaking out against sexualization in sports, German gymnasts cover up. The German women's team recently sparked discussion at the European Artistic Gymnastics Championships with their unusual outfit choice. While it's common for female gymnasts to wear leg-exposing leotards. Three members of the team instead wore full-body unitards. Though these are usually worn by athletes for religious reasons, the German gymnasts said they had done so to make a statement against sexualizing female gymnasts' bodies. Elizabeth Seitz, one of the three unitard-wearing gymnasts, said she feels every gymnast should be able to decide in which type of suit. She feels most comfortable, and then do gymnastics. A professor who has written about the sexualization of female athletes says that there is no performance advantage to wearing revealing outfits such as leotards. In fact, self-consciousness about how one's body looks in a skimpy uniform can present psychological distractions. That detract from female athletes' performance. The German gymnast's choice to perform in the more comfortable unitards shows that it is time to reconsider the unfair standards female athletes are held to in their sports. Okay, let's get to it. Let's talk about the contents of our unit for today, 
And for the month of September, again, it's our News Watch unit, and it is our All English lecture. So please remind me、uh, not to introduce the Chinese teacher because they're not supposed to be in the program today. <laughs> Nor are any words of any other language besides English、no. supposed to be talked about today, unless it's part of the English language already. But、uh, let's get to it here. Let's talk about the first story here. It's happening in the Netherlands, and of course, if you describe something from the Netherlands or Holland, you say that they are Dutch.、Uh, like for me, I have Dutch ancestry. I think my great grandparents or something like that came from Holland a long time ago, so I have Dutch blood, which is kind of interesting because、uh, there are some people in Taiwan who might have Dutch blood because of the Dutch occupation. Here many years ago, so hey, I might actually have distant relatives right here in Taiwan.、Cool. It's kind of a long shot here, but we're not actually talking about Dutch people in Taiwan. We're talking about Dutch people in Holland. There, more specifically, we're talking about bees in Holland. Those are those insects that、uh, have the、uh, hives and they produce honey and they pollinate flowers. We're talking about the Dutch bee populations and how they look to be remaining steady. Whereas、uh, the past couple of years, I know people have been worried about、um, the bee population reducing. We need bees in order to have food, so we support those bees, even though they like to sting us sometimes. So we're going to be talking about. Uh, a census that they had over there in the Netherlands. It's their fourth annual bee census. What's a census? Well, a census is when、uh, a country, a government, whatever group you're talking about, they have some sort of official count or survey of a population. And here, of course, we're not counting people; we're counting the bees over there. Uh, indeed, so the bee populations there have remained steady.、Uh, they've counted bees in different places, and、uh, they have not increased a lot, and they haven't really declined a lot. They have remained steady, and of course, they conducted this census for the fourth time.、Uh, the U.S. has a census every ten years or so, when they count the population in order to determine congressional districts and other things like that. So yes, they counted the bees in the Netherlands, and their fourth and Annual National Bee Census has produced encouraging news.、Uh, its urban bee populations are holding steady. These are the populations of bees living in the cities there, like Amsterdam and Utrecht, and、uh, places like that. And of course,、uh, the populations are holding steady. As I said, they're not increasing. They're not really decreasing. They're staying the same. Now, this is their fourth annual National Bee Census. And it's produced encouraging news—news news that makes people feel hopeful. It says its urban bee populations are holding steady. Urban, of course, means、uh, bee populations found in the city. So how how they did this just kind of made me laugh. I'll be honest. So the census occurred via a nationwide exercise back in April. They had eleven thousand participants. Um, who spent 30 minutes counting the bees and hoverflies in their gardens? So that's how they did their census. They didn't send out surveys or, you know, call everybody who lived in the city areas in the Netherlands. No, they had 11,000 people who wanted to participate, who were willing to go out into their their gardens and actually count the number of bees. And something called hoverflies for thirty minutes, and then they submitted those numbers into、uh, the the government, whoever was holding this bee census. So, what's a hoverfly, Tom? Well, actually, I did not know before our lesson, but it、uh, appears that hoverflies are insects that are similar to bees and do things very similar to bees.、Mm-hmm. They are important in pollination. If we can't get bees and hoverflies to pollinate flowers and plants and things like that, then certain vegetables just won't grow, and most of us are going to starve to death, or we'll have to eat only meat or something like that. But I'm not sure if that would actually work. So yes, they've、uh, measured. The populations, or they've calculated the populations of bees and hoverflies 
in the Netherlands, and they found out the populations are pretty much steady.、Uh, at least they have been holding steady over the past four times they conducted these censuses. And of course, they've counted them in their gardens. We had lots of people participating. So, if you are a person who participates in a certain kind of activity, you are a participant. And these participants spent about 30 minutes counting the bees and the hoverflies in their gardens. And as a result, more than 200,000 of these insects were counted, with an average of 18 to 20 per garden. And I must assume that the Dutch are probably similar to the English in that they love their gardens, they love their plants, and they love their flowers and stuff like that. So, of course, I'm sure lots of these people were more than happy to go into their gardens and count those bees and those hoverflies. Uh, yeah, and two hundred thousand were really、um, a pretty big number. They were all very happy that they had that many bees that they had been able to count. An average of eighteen to twenty per garden. That's quite a few, actually. When I read that, I was thinking of my mom's garden, and we had a lot of flowers in the backyard. And I don't think I ever saw twenty bees at the same time. Of course, we lived in a desert, but still. You know, twenty bees is pretty good per garden. Now let's move on to the next paragraph, guys. It says the country credits this to the public and private initiatives that Dutch bee lovers have implemented to save these helpful insects. When you credit somebody with doing something, it means you give them a lot of applause. You say it's because of you that we're able to do this. So a lot of times at the end of a movie, you'll you'll see what we call the credits. It'll say who the director is, the writer, the actors. Those are the credits that they roll at the end of a film or even on TV. Sometimes they'll still show the credits at the end. So they're saying who did this, who put this together. Well, the country says they have a steady population because of the public. And also, private initiatives or projects that some Dutch bee lovers worked to to put together to help save the bees in their particular country. Exactly, the Dutch, of course, are very environmentally conscious, and so lots of people there volunteered, and they had these private private projects or initiatives. And they implemented these programs, and they want to save these insects because they are helpful. They don't just sting us; they indeed play a useful role in the production of food, and they make a wonderful tasting honey. And one is Amsterdam's installation of bee hotels. So they had an installation there of these bee hotels. And what are they? Well, they are collections of small, hollow plant stems. For solitary bees to nest in. So yes, usually plants have a stem that's kind of the central trunk of a plant. It's kind of the main、uh, central stick in a、yeah. plant. And these are hollow, which means they're empty inside. And these solitary bees can nest in those. Of、uh, plant stems. If you're solitary, you're all by yourself, and you're not really hanging out with other people so much. Right, so that was a way for these solitary bees to have a place to stay. They stay here to nest in, where they could make these stems a home, where they could stay. Remember, they're solitary, so they're all alone. Usually, bees are in some sort of group, right? A beehive, lots and lots of bees together. Now we've got the city of Utrecht, and they've made three hundred sixteen. Of their bus stops, they've made them into bee stops with rooftop gardens. So, imagine our bus stops outside here in Taipei, and、uh, putting dirt and plants on top of the roof of some of these bus stops, and having lots of bees come along. They would kind of scare me. I'll be honest, Tom. I kind of laughed when I read this. I thought, "Wow, I don't know if I want bees that close to me as I'm waiting for a bus." I guess the Dutch are okay with that, and、uh, these bee stops will also absorb rainwater and dust. They'll kind of suck it all in there. And one woman has launched something called Honey Highway. 
If you launch someone, you begin a project. You can launch a rocket. You can launch a company. And this particular project, Honey Highway, collaborates with Dutch cities to plant wildflowers along highways and waterways, giving bees food and shelter. So if you collaborate with somebody, you work together with somebody. So this particular initiative, this project, collaborates with various cities in the Netherlands, and they plant wildflowers along highways. And of course, bees get food from those flowers, and they also get shelter there. They get protection from storms and rain and stuff like that. And it's hoped that other countries can imitate these caring measures to protect their own bee populations. Here, imitate just means to copy something. So yeah, maybe、uh, the Netherlands here are setting a good example, so some other countries can try this. Maybe even Taiwan can try this to increase our bee populations. Okay, that brings us. To the midway point in our lesson for today, let's take a break. But please come back in a couple of seconds. We will continue. Welcome back, guys. Hey, we're going to look at our second news story now. The headline—that's what we call the titles for news stories. The headline is "Speaking Out Against Sexualization in Sports." German gymnasts cover up. Sort of—it's、uh, not a complete sentence. Most headlines are a little weird, but、uh, we try to put a lot of information in a headline. So you might be missing some、uh, smaller words like、uh, conjunctions, like "and the but" things like that. But we're、uh, talking about some German athletes. They're gymnasts, so they participate in gymnastics, and they're speaking out against sexualization in sports. And how are they doing that? Well, they're doing it with their uniforms. They're letting their uniforms speak for them in a way you could say. Now, if you sexualize somebody, it means you're really focusing on their sex. Uh, lately, we've had a lot of kids being sexualized, so they dr- they dress up these little girls like they're prostitutes or they're dancers, and they're supposed to look sexy, but they're four years old, so it's really kind of creepy. Well, it's that same idea. Instead of focusing on the gymnast's athletic ability. Those、uh, uniforms that they're usually seen in, they kind of focused on how how pretty their bodies are instead of how、um, how great of an athlete these women are because they're amazing. Uh, they are, and、uh, you know the men aren't going out there wearing skirts and stuff like that.、Uh, they pretty much have those uh, uh, outfits that cover the whole body. So yes, according to these、uh, women in Germany,、uh, the women should have the same option as well. But、uh, you know, when I think of a female gymnast doing the floor exercises, I almost always imagine one、uh, in those、uh, small outfits with the little skirt or what's that called, the fringe around her waist or something.、Mm-hmm. A lot of them don't wear skirts. They're in leotards.、Uh, leotards, yeah, but th- with a little fringe around the outside of it, or something like that. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. They're focusing on the fact that、uh, the leotards have their legs bare. But you know, a lot of those gymnasts,、um, they prefer to、uh, perform some of their tricks, some of their、uh, their skills with those leotards on. These girls are using something different. So let's talk about that. We've got the German women's team, who recently sparked discussion at the European Artistic Gymnastics Championships. Why were people talking about them? Why or how did they spark or start discussion? Well, they had very unusual outfits on. Their uniforms were different from some of the other girls, some of the other women. Now, if you spark something, it's a verb we use to say something gets started. So、um, it could spark a、uh, discussion. Maybe some words that you say spark a fight. Um, a spark, a change. Maybe you do something that gets a company that you work for to change a policy. So what they wore actually sparked discussion. People started talking. 
Right. So people saw that and they started talking about it, and this happened at the European Artistic Gymnastics Championships, and that was because of their unusual outfit choice. Your outfit, of course, is the set of clothing that you wear. Uh, men usually don't wear outfits. I would imagine women coming to the office, for example, and one of their coworkers would say, "Oh, I like your outfit because it's matched." You know, the the、uh, the pants, the trousers, and the blouse or whatever match, and it's got some nice accessories and something like that. That will be a nice outfit.、Uh, men just wear boring old suits to the office. I wouldn't call a suit and a tie an outfit. Yeah, if a guy really likes clothes, you might call him a clothes horse.、Um, he probably has outfits. I had a friend who probably spent more time working or worrying about his outfit、uh, that he was going to wear to work than I did. So it, it depends on the guy. But yeah, they had unusual outfit choices. It's common for female gymnasts to wear leg exposing leotards. Leotards are very tight to the body. They stretch. They're made out of a very stretchy elastic fabric, because their body has to move in so many different ways. You know, they're doing things like splits, which most people can't do. So, three members of the German team came to that particular championship wearing something unusual. Instead of wearing the leotards with their legs exposed, they were wearing full body unitards. Unitard just means. One piece of fabric, and of course, it is similar to a leotard because it's stretchy fabric that it's made out of. But it covers the whole body, including the arms and the legs. So I guess very little skin is exposed. We should mention the word leotard.、Uh, I think、uh, comes from a、uh, French. Trapeze artist who lived in the 1800s, so I guess he wore an outfit like that. So nowadays we have this word leotard, and now there's a new word that I didn't know about. It's called a unitard, and so it covers the whole body. And though these are usually worn by athletes for religious reasons, the German gymnast said they had done so to make a statement against sexualizing female gymnast bodies. So yeah, they're usually worn. For religious reasons, I'm guessing Muslim women wear them to cover up their body as much as possible. And in this particular case, though, the German gymnasts were not doing it for religious reasons; they did it to make a statement. They don't want、uh, female gymnasts bodies to be sexualized. In other words, it seems like if you want to be a female gymnast, you kind of have to wear an outfit that shows a lot of skin. I don't think it's just the skin, though, Tom.、Uh, the leotards, and including the guys, the guy gymnasts, they're skin tight. So I don't think there's much that you're leaving to the imagination. You're still in an, an outfit, a uniform that is really、uh, tight fitting to your body. So even though they're trying to make this statement, I don't think it's、um, as successful as they might think it is. It's still pretty sexy if you wear clothes that are skin tight. Um, I know when I watch the guys、uh, who are the gymnasts competing, I'm a little embarrassed for them because their、uh, their leotards are so tight. So anyway, but they're trying to make a statement this way. Now we've got this person named Elizabeth Zeitz. She's one of the three unitard wearing gymnasts, so she's one of the gymnasts who's competing. And this is her quote. She says she feels that. Every gymnast should be able to decide in which type of suit she feels most comfortable, and then do gymnastics. I guess if you really wanted to be、uh, modest and cover up your body,、um, it would be more difficult to do some of the gymnastics tricks that they do. You know, they're flipping in the air and they're on that.、Uh, The balance beam.、Um, you'd probably want to wear as tight an outfit as possible to keep your balance. So I can see why、um, they do wear these leotards.、Uh, the unitard would seem like it would just be、um, also very tight fitting, but good to do some of these gymnastic acrobatics that they do. They are doing things that are very scary and dangerous. 
And I think they wear the smaller leotards, probably out of tradition. That's what they've been wearing for many, many years. But、uh, these、uh, German gymnasts feel that、uh, women should have the choice to decide what kind of outfit that they feel most comfortable in. I think that's fair, don't you? I, I do too. I and of course,、uh, they should be judged on their performance skills,、right. and not、uh, the kind of outfit they're wearing. The problem seems... is, is the way they judge Tom. They're looking at angles of the body. So if you're wearing something that's Covering or bigger than just skin tight, it would be hard to judge whether you're accomplishing、uh, some of the things that you're supposed to in that particular competition. I suppose,、uh, realistically, of course, the best way to judge someone's performance is if they're totally naked. But nobody's no, going to do that nowadays. You don't need to do that. Yeah, you wouldn't.、Uh, You wouldn't see anybody doing that.、Uh, I think maybe the Greeks did many centuries ago. Yeah, that's how、I、they performed they in Olympics. I think they were very proud to perform in the nude. Just but, men.、Uh, Just、yeah. men. Just men, right? We won't do that、uh, in modern times. But a professor who has written about the sexualization of female athletes says that there is no performance advantages to wearing revealing outfits such as leotards. So this is according to a professor who maybe did some surveys and、uh, did some observation of female athletes performing. And this particular professor does not feel that the outfits. Uh, make any difference? So yeah, if you wear a, a leotard or a unitard, you'll perform the same, at least according to this professor. Yeah, I think they're still skin tight. They're doing that in swimming too. Some of the swimmers have started wearing the unitard, like the one swimsuit that covers their whole body, so that they can move faster in the water. I think you should wear what you think you'll perform best in. So she says here, in fact, self consciousness. Feeling kind of、um, like everyone's looking at you, or that you might be a little embarrassed—that's、uh, what self-consciousness is. If you're feeling that way about one's body or how it looks in a skimpy uniform, that can present psychological distractions. Psychological means、uh, having to do with your mind, the way you're thinking. And yeah, I can see that. You know, when they wear those leotards, you see them constantly pulling their leotard. Down over their butt. Have you noticed that?、Mm. I noticed that when they perform, they have to because they shift. So yeah, I can see why they would want to wear some of these unitards that would cover them more completely. They don't have to constantly adjust to make sure they're being covered sufficiently. A distraction is when something、uh, takes your attention away from what you need to focus on. So yeah, if you can get rid of those distractions. That detract from your performance as an athlete. That would be much better. And we wrap things up here by saying the German gymnast's choice to perform in the more comfortable unitards shows that it is time to reconsider the unfair standards female athletes are held to in their sports. If you're held to something, you're expected to do this a certain way. And yeah, if I were a gymnast, I would rather have the choice and not be required to dress a certain way. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today, and it begin brings us to the end of our lesson. For today, so thanks so much for joining us, and please join us again next month for another edition of our All English Lecture and our News Watch Unit. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.